Greetings again. Uh, my name is Marko Radovic and I'm here as a representative of the railway cluster for Southeast Europe. Uh, the railway cluster which uh, gathers uh, companies uh, of the railway supply industry from the Western Balkan region and covers uh, this region for all ra railway support matters. Uh, what I will be doing is giving you a short presentation on the current infrastructure projects which are being uh, which are happening in the Western Balkan region, namely in the three countries, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia. But uh, first, uh, let me give you... Um, but, but first, uh, let me give you a bit about uh, ourselves. Uh, Railway Cluster for Southeast Europe is a part of Business Support Network. Business Support Network is a consultancy group uh, formed by managers and uh, employees of various uh, business associations in the region. And uh, uh, all the, all, it, it has in its membership a number of consultants and also uh, companies which provide services to the other companies. What Business Support Network does is it provides uh, services for first for uh, companies which seek to enter the region uh, whether it's pre-investment analysis, market research, or everyday assistance in conducting business, but it also uh, helps regional companies uh, to uh, create business connections uh, on the on the second and third markets, especially in the EU and the countries which are where the German is uh, primary language. Now uh, the RC RCSEE the railway cluster for southeast europe as a part of bsn was formed in 2016. Uh, it networks uh, both regional companies and the companies uh, foreign companies which seek to enter the region and do business in this market currently it has 55 members from 12 countries and uh, it has three sectors which currently operate within the cluster those are education and certification logistics, infrastructure, and information technologies, and international cooperation and strategic planning. Uh, Railway Cluster for Southeast Europe is also a source of information on current uh, up-to-date events uh, in the railway industry in the region through its uh, regular newsletter, the Sea Rail Perspective. Also, it organizes various events at uh, providing information and education for its members about the newest railway trends, uh, it, events which uh, help networking regional industry, and also uh, events which seek to promote the railway industry in the third markets. Uh, one example of such uh, events, this is a major event that it organizes, uh, is the CE Mobility, a, fair, a local fair of transport technologies and services which was first held in 2017. Back then it gathered 25 exhibitors from 11 countries. And in 2019, it uh, gathered 37 exhibitors. Uh, it's a, a two-day event uh, held biannually. Uh, for more information, you can find on the link uh, cmobility.com. Uh, it's going to happen again uh, in, in this year. And hopefully uh, we are planning to host it as a live event. Now, a couple of words about the Western Balkan infrastructure in general. Uh, infrastructure in the Western Balkans is in a very bad shape. It was uh, major investments there uh, in, the, in the railway infrastructure in the Western Balkans were done in the 70s. Unfortunately, uh, during the 90s, the investments in maintenance and development of new infrastructure stopped. And only recently has it uh, big, yeah, uh, has uh, the governments of the region put it back on the agenda. So uh, right now we have uh, very large problems with the quality of the infrastructure and large renewable and construction works are needed all around on the Western Balkans. However, Western Balkans does have an important position. It is an intersection of three pan-European corridors, namely Corridor 5, which uh, connects Venice, Budapest and Kiev, Corridor 8, which corrects Dures in Albania and Varna in Bulgaria, and Corridor 10, which connects uh, Salzburg to Thessaloniki in Greece. Uh, as, as I said, the infrastructure is in very bad shape, and it was estimated uh, that the total cost 
of uh, repairing the infrastructure and raising it uh, to the level which is compatible and comparable to the railways uh, in uh, east uh, in western europe would is going to cost around 15 billion euros in total now i will move on to the uh, infrastructure projects which are currently going on in croatia as you can see here some uh, basic data on the croatian uh, railway network it has some 2617 kilometers of railway tracks of which uh, 970 is electrified tracks and 274 kilometers is double tracks. Um, it is also interesting to notice that uh, 2 billion uh, of uh, Croatia's krunas are going to be invested in uh, 2021 to 2025 period. And these works mainly uh, concern with implementing the technical standards of interoperability increasing the speeds the projected speeds on all sections to 160 kilometers per hour and of course uh, increasing safety and reliability which is very important for the region right now this is an example of one of such projects it's a uh, it's a section dugo selo uh, uh, an important uh, part which connects uh, the capital city of zagreb the, through the rail with the uh, hungarian border uh, this project is uh, mean, uh, includes a reconstruction of entire 36.4 kilometer line, construction of a second track as it was a single track uh, railway section by now, um, then the reconstruction of three new stations, construction of a new station, uh, construction of five new bridges for the second track and reconstruction of seven existing bridges. And also elimination of uh, 17 uh, level crossing through underpasses and overpasses. And normally uh, upgrade of electric traction installations, interlocking signaling and telecommunication devices. The entire project's uh, value is 200 million euros and is co-financed by European Regional Development Fund. The second part of this railway uh, going to the state border with Hungary is the uh, Križevci Koprinica state border. Uh, section, which is a 42.6 kilometers long section, and it includes also reconstruction of the existing and creation of the second truck, reconstruction of two new stations and four stops, construction of a new station, raising speed to 160 kilometers per hour, and the total uh, cost of this project is 350 million euros, co-financed by uh, Connecting Europe Facility Program. Uh, with these two projects, Croatia will uh, complete their connection to the Hungarian railways network. Uh, this is an example of a smaller work, which is being uh, of a smaller regional railway, which is still important for the Zagreb area, which is one of the most um, densely populated uh, areas in Croatia. It's a regional line, some 23.85 kilometers long. And it, uh, the project uh, seeks to increase speed to 120 kilometers per hour, electrify the railway as it, as it has not been electrified so far, reconstruct stations, but also include uh, video surveillance and audio notification systems on the stations. Uh, and of course, uh, implement new signaling, interlocking and telecommunication devices. Uh, of course, since it is a very densely populated region, it also has to include a modernization of 15 level crossings. The entire cost of the project is 81.5 million euros, and it is co-financed by the EU Cohesion Fund. The third uh, interesting project is uh, Vinkovci Vukovar section, which is uh, which ties Serbia, uh, which ties Croatia to the state border with Serbia. It is 18.71 kilometers long section, uh, and it, the, the project seeks to reconstruct and electrify the existing single track line, raising the maximum speed to 120 kilometers per hour, renewal of two stations, but also, also normal includes works on civil engineering, control and command systems, signaling, interlocking, and power subsystems. The entire uh, cost of this project is estimated to be 89.95 million euros, and it is again co-financed by the EU Cohesion Fund. On the western side of Croatia is the Škrijevo-Jeka-Judrani section of the railway, 
which connects uh, the port of Rijeka, a very important and major port for Western Balkans. It includes, uh, this project includes construction of a second truck, so uh, it will seek to remove the bottlenecks, whether for passenger or freight transport, upgrade and moder modernize the existing line. The project is currently in the design phase, and it is very important for the Mediterranean corridor, as I said, to remove the bottlenecks, whether for passenger or freight transport, which is uh, for which Port of Rijeka is a very important one. And in preparation, Croatia is uh, doing uh, very big uh, efforts to modernize the eastern section of the of the railway network, which connects again the central part of Zagreb to uh, towards uh, Serbia and uh, further on to the corridor 10. Uh, those it has two major sections. This eastern railway has two major sections. One is uh, Dugo Selonovska uh, on this map, the first uh, orange line. Uh, it is some 83, point, 83 kilometers long. And the second one is Okuchani Vinkovci, 131 kilometers long. Uh, both of these uh, projects are currently in the planning phase. And uh, hopefully we will see them happening soon, which, because it will uh, again renew the railway connection between Croatia and Serbia, and again uh, uh, assist uh, this uh, the creation and utilization of the trans-European transport network. Now, when it comes to Slovenia, Slovenia's priorities are to connect uh, its uh, railway uh, to the Austria. Uh, first, some. Uh, simple uh, points about uh, railway infrastructure in Slovenia and its railway network. It has one, some 1,207 kilometers of railway track, of which 333 are double tracks and 503 kilometers are electrified. Uh, it is also part of uh, several uh, pan-European corridors, namely Baltic Adriatic Corridor 5, Mediterranean Corridor 6, and the Corridor 10, again, uh, 10 plus. So when we speak about uh, connecting uh, Slovenia to uh, Austria, this is uh, the one of the sections where that is happening. It's Maribor Chantil. Uh, it's a 16 kilometers long section. It's, uh, it's going to be modernized in accordance to the European technical standards of interoperability, seeking to increase uh, projected speeds to 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, all of the, uh, the estimated cost of this uh, project is 285.65 million euros, and it's co-financed by the EU Cohesion Fund. Uh, the renewal and modernization of the existing track is phase one. Uh, the phase two is uh, going to be the construction of a second track, but that is going to be done according to the needs uh, when the situation is evaluated uh, together with uh, Austrian government. A second uh, interesting, uh, important project for Slovenia is uh, a small section, Zidani Most Celje. It's a 26 kilometers long section, but uh, it's very important since it presents a bottleneck on the railway network. And uh, increasing the project will increase capacity on this section from 328 to 354 uh, trains per day, which will remove this bottleneck. It costs uh, 282.4 million euros and is also uh, co-financed by the Connecting Europe facility. Finally, a very major and important project in Slovenia is Ljubljana Divča uh, railway section, which is 104 kilometers long. It's double track, electrified, it, but it needs uh, renewal of tracks, upgrading of level crossings, and uh, also implementing uh, new technologies in according to TSIs, installing automatic track blocks, European train control systems. The estimated value of this project is uh, 672.6 million euros. And last is uh, another connection to Austria, which connects uh, the capital city of Ljubljana to the Austrian border. It's Ljubljana Jesenice section, which is 64.5 kilometers long. It uh, includes uh, upgrade and construction of a second truck. 
uh, and currently the project is in design phase and the national spatial plan is being prepared for it. Now, when it comes to Serbia, Serbia's uh, railway net current railway network is some 3,364 uh, 3, kilometers long. 289 kilometers are double tracks. Uh, 1,274 kilometers is rectified. Uh, also, Serbia has a very large number of level crossings, some uh, 2,131, which is a very high uh, cost and very high investment for uh, Nas Serbia's national railways. The major pro the current major projects have begun on uh, 2014, which uh, marked uh, the beginning of intensive works on the railway network. Uh, the, the first uh, and the most important currently project is Belgrade Budapest High Speed Rail, which is being done together with uh, partners from uh, China and Russian Federation. Uh, currently, in, uh, currently, works are being done on two uh, double track sections on the Belgrade Budapest line, which is uh, which are 74.9 kilometers long. Uh, the cost of those uh, works is 944 million euros, and it will connect the city of Belgrade uh, with the another another major city in Serbia, Novi Sad, which uh, uh, which uh, which is a very important uh, which is a very important uh, railway section for passengers and for uh, freight. Uh, then is a smaller another thing another project being done. Uh, currently is the Yainzi Mala Krsna section, for, uh, which is some 60 kilometers long uh, section on the corridor X10. Uh, then uh, Serbian national railways are performing renewal of regional sections in total length of one, some 116 kilometers. And uh, finally, there is the construction of intermodal terminal in the city of Bata, in the town Batajnica next to Belgrade. Uh, uh, where it will have the connection between both between the River Danube, uh, ray, railway and road traffic, making it uh, Serbia's first and primary uh, intermodal terminal. However, apart from these projects, uh, some 1.5 billion uh, euros is planned to be invested in the projects in the next period on the renewal of railway infrastructure. Uh, the major project is uh, Novi Sad Subotica. Again, it's a 108 kilometers uh, long section of uh, Belgrade Budapest uh, railway network, which connects the uh, city of Novi Sad to uh, the state border. It's going to be a high speed rail, a double track high speed rail, which projected speeds up to 200 kilometers per hour. There is an existing track, which is supposed to be modernized, but uh, the project itself uh, includes also the constru immediate construction of the second truck. It is planned to, the works are planned to start in the second half of 2021. The deadline is 33 months since uh, the works start. The projected value for this is uh, 1.021 uh, billion euros, and it's financed through the loan from the Chinese Exim Bank. Another, uh, very important uh, project for Serbia's infrastructure, but not really construction work, is the dispatching center, which uh, includes the construction of center for tracking, management, and regulation of transport on the entire network from a single location. It is going to be a project which will use modern technologies and uh, technical hardware and software solutions. The investment value is some. Uh, 107.8 million euros, and it is being financed by loan from uh, Russian Federation. On the corridor X, on the corridor 10, there is the Niš Dimitrovgrad section, uh, which connects the uh, city of Niš and uh, again a major railway line to the uh, Bulgarian uh, railway network. Uh, it includes the modernization of and the reconstruction of the section to the state border but also electrification and implementing signalization on the whole section. Uh, it, uh, it, the project will also include the construction of a uh, bypass section, which will bypass the city of Niš 
and its estimated value is 268.3 million euros. It is planned to start during 2022 and end. The works are going, supposed to end in 2024. And it is co-financed by the European Investment Bank and the World Bank Investment Fund. Uh, another section on the corridor 10 is uh, 22.8 kilometer long section Nice Brestovac. Uh, which requires uh, works on renewal of construction and electrotechnical infrastructure. The estimated value of these works is uh, 59.9 million euros. Uh, the expected deadline for, the, the, for this section to be complete is late 2023, and it is co-financed by the European Union's um, Instrument of Pre-Accession Assistance. So, in conclusion, Past several years have seen uh, an increase in railway projects uh, in this region, uh, something that was uh, very needed for the for the region as a whole. Uh, and right now, the infrastructure is the main focus uh, to modernize the tracks, to fix uh, black spots on the which are numerous on the railways, and to implement uh, proper signalization and safety measures. Uh, however, uh, these Infrastructure, uh, these investments in the inf and development of the railway infrastructure also so shows that the regional railway systems, which were separate for many years, are again now reintegrating. And they are both uh, reintegrating one with the an another, but also as a part of greater uh, European uh, railway network. And that through itself, we also demand that works are not just being done uh, on, co on construction level. We are not just going to talk about uh, infrastructure and uh, tracks and electric systems and traction systems. We are going to talk about uh, implementation of new technologies, of uh, new safety measures, um, some uh, of telecommunication and innovative product products which make uh, railways safer and more reliable for users and passengers so uh, and uh, this is something that's going to come it the the region is currently uh, open for such uh, innovative solutions and products so uh, even though we are now six years some six to eight years in the investment in the infrastructure railway infrastructure the work is just beginning and one of the points of the Railway cluster for Southeast Europe is to present, to uh, help create and uh, market these innovative products to the national railways and to implement them on the uh, railway networks. So thank you for your attention. Uh, these are my contact details. And for more information about whether the railway cluster or the business support network, you can find them on the links below. Thank you very much and have a nice day.